Check, check. Well, that's the response to me. You are in for a treat. How's it going, Mary? Expo? Are you having a great expo so far? Uh, so one of the cool things about being a geek, a genre fan, is our differences, and we're all into different sort of content, but I know we all have shared the opinion uh, that we're really, really stoked to be here in this room on day four of Fan Expo 2013 right now. My name is Teddy. I host a show called Inner Space on the Space Channel, and, uh, oh, stop it. and uh, this is easily my favorite weekend of the year, and it's about to get a whole lot better. Any fans of Joss Whedon's What You Do About Nothing out there? Of uh, Dr. Horrible Sealog Blonde, perhaps? <laughs> Any fans of Firefly and Serenity? <laughs> fans of Castle? <laughs> Please welcome Nathan Philly and Hero to Us Geeks! First of all, wow. All you guys over there, and all you guys over there, you got just some crappy seats. Hey everybody up here, the good seats. I'm gonna pay extra special attention to you guys over there. And for you guys over here, I'm gonna look directly at the camera when I'm talking to you, so you can look at the screen. <laughs> and I'll be like, hey audience, everything, you know what I mean, guys at the left. <laughs> That'll be when I'm talking to you. Hey, Teddy. Hey, how's it going? Not bad, thanks. Thanks for asking. You want to sit or stand? What do you feel like? What do you say? Let's Keep stand. Up. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to open the floor to audience questions. So we've got a mic runner on this side. <laughs> a million heads. Uh, there's a mic runner on that side, a mic runner on that side. So put up your hand, and we will try to get to you. Uh, but right out of the gate, Nathan, I want to ask you. Obviously, your work has been em embraced by everybody now, but do you kind of revel the title? No, no, no Teddy, I have a question. Oh, I thought we were doing a thing. No, I have a question. Oh, good, 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 yeah. What's your question for yourself? Can I have a high five? Yeah! <laughs> I'm sorry for preempting it. Uh, so obviously you've been em embraced by everybody now at this point, but do you, do you kind of revel, because I know you're a geek yourself, you're a genre fan yourself, do you revel that title unofficially of Prince of the Geeks? Because if, if there was a crown, it would be yours, sir. <laughs> First of all, thank you. You're welcome. Second, oh my god. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you know this, there's a bunch of icons here. <laughs> and when I go back to the green room to pee and wash my hands, and have a sandwich and coffee, Richard D. Anderson, that's right. So, uh, my brother's over there talking to Alice Cooper. And then I just kind of saunter over and have a chat with Luke Perry and Jason Bruce <laughs> I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm gonna come out here and I hang out with all you guys, and you guys go, Hey Nathan, you're so great. You're awesome. You're so good looking. Good stuff. <laughs> Worst day ever. And by the way, I believe every word you said. To me. <laughs> Which is why the rest of my life is kind of a downer, and I come here, and everything's wonderful. <laughs> but on my worst day, actually, my life is pretty great, really. So. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> guys, I'm glad. We'll talk to you in a minute, guys. Uh, let's open it right up to the floor because I'm sure there's a ton of questions. Uh, on the left, uh, there we go, yeah. Grab a hand. Uh, before we get there, I want to ask you, uh, Castle Season 5 is obviously wrapped, you're getting a Season 6, no surprise, but congratulations. Um, how did you feel about where that was left? The scene on the swings, was I the only one who went, oh? Did you guys go, oh. uh, What did you think about where things uh, were left, and specifically this season, with uh, Castle and Kate together? So we left off in Season 5 with Castle on bended knee. We pick up in Season 6 with Castle on bended knee. I spent the entire hiatus on my knee. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fine, I think. <laughs> I think you'll like it. We're right now, I think we're filming season, sorry, 
episode four or five. We're already doing it. I left work on Friday night, jumped on an airplane, arrived here 5.30 in the morning, got to a hotel, took an hour nap, got up, had breakfast, my brother and I. By the way, here's a secret. You want to have a great time at an expo, at a con, bring someone you dig. Bring someone who's going to make it a great time. For me, that someone is Jeff Fillion. Where is he? Is he hearing me? Down the end. I love you, buddy. Here's what I did for you. Worst seat in the house. Nothing's too good for my brother. Uh, so yeah, I, I flew in here and uh, what was your question? <laughs> We're having a great time filming it. Did I? I like where it was left off. Yeah, things are going great. Um, people ask me, what's going to happen? How come? Are you ever going to? I just love when people think I have control. <laughs> when. The reality is not as romantic as when you when I'm on TV and the, the show's called Castle and I play Castle. Guys on the left. And now I'm talking to you guys over here. When, when people come to me and they think I'm the boss, <laughs> I, first of all, I love it. Second, the reality is I get to work in the morning, they say, here, put this on your face. Do your hair like that. Wear this. Go stand over here and say this. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Castle's in good hands. Woo! They're just not mine. <laughs> in terms of say this, uh, you've del delivered some amazing dialogue over your career in Firefly and you know tons of other projects. Do you like delivering the dialogue in Castle? Is he a fun guy to play because it's so well written? It's super fun to play uh, Castle. And one thing we do on Castle, I think you might notice this, everybody in the middle. And I'll just do a couple of knots on these two guys on the left. We, something we've kind of cultivated on Castle that I really, really enjoy. Uh, Esposito and Ryan are very good at this. I love to do this. I just, I just love doing this. It's something I kind of picked up on Firefly from Joss Whedon. Thank you very much. Anytime your character looks super cool, kick him right in the nuts. <laughs> Approaching the crime scene, looking really good. Seem like a good guy. Taking that time, that uh, crime scene tape. Don't not cross this line. Come up and <laughs> hit you in the face. <laughs> totally cool. <laughs> Take your character down a peg. We do that a lot on the show. It's something that I find is a lot of fun. Sometimes it's now even scripted. <laughs> as soon as something super cool happens, right in the nuts. <laughs> Let's open it up on the side here. Hello. Hi. No, um, no hi to you. <laughs> um, I get to be your fan expo first. <laughs> Anyway, um, I was just wondering, uh, you obviously have a lot of friends, you're very vocal on Twitter. Um, one of the reasons I started following James Gunn um, would obviously be because of you. I was kind of wondering what it was like working with him. I mean, I've also, he's, he's, so, much, uh, he's so much fun to actually watch on Twitter and also as well on Facebook. Um, also, if maybe there's a chance you would work with him again, because that is, once again, awesome. Um, yeah, that's pretty much one of the joys of my career, aside from doing fantastic projects, I get to do projects I'm so in love with, is the opportunity to work with the same people again. Um, so I've worked with James a couple times now. We did Slither together. And then during the writer's strike, we did PG Porn. Did anybody see that? If you haven't, you're in for a treat. It's fun for the whole family. I, I really enjoy working with people that I say, I know this person, I love this person, I respect their talent, I know what to expect, and we're gonna have fun. I know what it's going to be like going into it. It's a fantastic experience. That's why I keep going back and working with Joss. Anything Joss says, I do. <laughs> James Gunn, same rule. If James Gunn says, let's go do this project, I say yes. 
I enjoy working with these people. I love it. Uh, what's James Gunn like in real life? Let me tell you this. He is crass. <laughs> that guy, if you follow him on Twitter, he is crass mofo. <laughs> One time I was at his house having a, port, we're having a party, and his parents are there, and he said something so crass in front of his parents, I thought, James Gunn, nice parents are here. And James, someone said, oh no. Have you ever heard James's dad go off? <laughs> <laughs> so apparently that's where James gets it. <laughs> From Mr. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any of you seen Super? Did you see the film Super? <laughs> it's a film not enough people have seen, please see it. Uh, what was it like working with James on Super? Because I love your character there, Holy Avenger. Was that a fun one to work on? First of all, not only do you get to work for James, you actually get to work with James and his incredible acting talents. Yeah. That's what James is like in real life. When he's dressed up like the devil. Did you know that the devil in Super? We did a Christian superhero show that Rain Wilson's character in Super watches and gets inspired. I play the Holy Avenger. And James essentially plays the devil. And he's really over the top. That's him in real life. An over the top demon. When you found out he was going to be directing Guardians of the Galaxy, did you say, yes, great choice? Oh, yes I did. First of all, he's in love with it. He loves it. These projects in the hands of people who are passionate about them, I think that's one of the secrets of doing a great project. Second, get people involved who are incredibly talented. Like James. <laughs> <laughs> and then aim for the nuts. What was that? And then aim for the nuts. And then aim for the nuts. Uh, let's go to the other side for the question. Hello. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Uh, Hi. Okay, uh, I told you this yesterday privately. I want to say this publicly. In my opinion... Woo! <laughs> Straight, but thank you. In my opinion, <laughs> your work on Castle in the last couple of seasons deserves an Emmy. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, you met me in my Dr. Horrible career. Where, where am I? I'm going to be over there. Hey, hi. hi there. <laughs> but I wanted to ask huge Castle fan, and I loved you since Two Guys, a Girl, and Pizza Place. <laughs> After four years of working with Stan on long hours, you must be... Um, very used to each other. But now in the past season, you've been very close and romantic. Have um, either of you ever lost it in a scene, like a couple of giggles or something, because it's a whole new level of interacting? Uh, you know, it's really strange. When you're doing a scene like that, when you're talking about romantic scenes in uh, television and film, I think you'd be surprised at how remarkably unromantic it is. <laughs> Oh, are you coming in? Are you going left or are you going right? I'll, I'll go right. You, you go left, I'll go right. My right. You go my right. So that your face is on that camera. When we turn around, are you going to get this fit? Okay, it's choreographed. It's like, hang on, I just had a coffee, I gotta go brush my teeth. Like, it's not quite as romantic as you might think. It's just, we're, it's actually, you're probably more self-conscious. Technically, we're wearing less clothing or we're in bed. But there's still like 50 guys going like this, sitting around you going, <laughs> holding lights and screens, kind of doing all this. There's a guy with a microphone holding it over you going... <laughs> Not quite as romantic as you might think. <laughs> to hold the mic? Um, do the giggles happen? Yeah, that kind of stuff happens all the time. We laugh all the time. Mostly at John Wright's. But... <laughs> Because that guy's funny. That's all there is to it. Seamus knows when I'm around not to be funnier than me. He's got that much class. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not quite as romantic as you might think. But yes, we're all, it, that, that giggly thing. Gee, sometimes it's late at night. You know, when everybody's just kind of tired and exhausted and just wants to get out of there. One thing will happen that'll set us all off. And it'll, be, it'll be over. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would want to know, would she say you're a good kisser? Would she say it? Yeah. In my mind, that's what everybody says. <laughs> Over on this side. 
We have a question on that side. Hey. Hi, Nathan. Ooh, oh. where, where am I looking? Give me a ring. Down okay. here. <laughs> um, you always get to play kick-ass, awesome characters. But how much fun was it to be on Buffy as a villain when you were a kid? Very fun to play a villain. Again, uh, another education I got from Joss Whedon. I didn't know this. Villains don't believe they're the villain. I didn't understand that. <laughs> I didn't know that. And Joss taught me that. Oh, let's see. Um, it, it, Joss taught me that if you play a villain, just make sure that he thinks he's right and he feels justified and righteous. And that's what makes anybody dangerous. That's what makes anybody with an odd idea that they think they're right and righteous. That's what makes them weird. <laughs> they don't think they're doing something wrong. They think they're doing something right. That's that's the scary ones. I learned that. So that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> You are. <laughs> in terms of being righteous or evil, how righteous did Captain Hammer think he was in, in Dr. Hammer? <laughs> and how did you channel that? <laughs> Again, that's... Uh, rather than being evil, I think Captain Hammer is simply incredibly shallow. Which is probably... <laughs> It's probably just as good as being evil. If you don't care that much about anyone except yourself, is that not evil? <laughs> That's kind of evil. Right, guys on the left? <laughs> <laughs> on this side? Oh, hello. Um, hello. Hi, I'm a huge fan of Firefly and more recently Castle. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, I, mean, I know you don't write the characters, but you get in their head, you play them. Uh, if Mel Reynolds and Rick Castle somehow met up, how do you think they'd interact? I think Malcolm Reynolds would shoot Castle in the face. I'm sorry. Sorry. Castle is more annoying than Wash. And you saw what happened to Wash. So, so that we all know, Alan and I are very tight. Okay? We're like this. That's me on top. When people come around, they go, hey, can you sign my DVD? I'm collecting everybody's signature. And Alan has already signed it. He signs his name and then does this little swoop under it that puts a mustache under my nose. And and then draws a little chin spinach right there. And I go, <laughs> Alan, Wash dies. Ah, <laughs> uh, this side. Hello? Hi, Nathan. Where am I looking? Hi, over here. What? Oh, there you are. Hi, Tiny. <laughs> Could you comment maybe on the Uncharted movie? Would that still be something you're interested in doing? Is it still like potential? So again, here's one of those situations where it looks like, hey, why don't you do the Uncharted movie? Like, yeah, I think I might. Like, it's my call. <laughs> Honestly, no. Second, probably the worst thing you could do to get an actor in a movie is probably rally for it to happen. Because now you've got like a director or a producer with tens of billions of dollars behind them to say, hey, go, go do this, with, with pre pressure from fans saying, do it the way we want. You, do the, you better do this. And for all the people saying, hey, it might be a good idea, there's probably about 150 going, if you don't. And it gets really creepy and weird. Um, there will be a time when I get a role that people probably think, hey, that's made for him. And with that, I'd be happy. As far as these other films, if, if something comes along, great. But uh, I don't, I don't for, for the love of God, I don't want to rally the troops. You know what I mean? Except for that one. <laughs> voice work, I need. The voice work, I need. Which I think I got a lock on. But Nathan, Nathan Drake's based on you. Uncharted is based on you. I know that. So, uh, <laughs> Did you like voicing uh, Green Lantern? You've done it a few times. Uh, was Hal Jordan a fun guy to voice and, and get inside his head? It's a kick. It's yeah. a super kick. Um, 
It's a man without fear, so I just play him as like super confident, kind of like Captain Hammer, just nicer. He's more polite, not a skeevy. More intelligent, uh, kinder. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a piece of cake, and uh, you, you don't have to dress up to go to work. You just go to work. And, uh, and those people are all love. Uh, Andre Romano, who keeps including me in these things, who directs these things. What a lovely lady. What a lovely lady. She's had me to her home for her barbecues. She's just the nicest. Gosh. It's one of those things where you, you work with the same people again and again because you know they're going to be lovely and you know you're going to have a good time.